birthday to everyone born during the month of April. May this year be your best year ever. Join us next Sunday, April 9th at 11.15 a.m. right here in the sanctuary for our Resurrection Sunday service. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back, Pastor Washington. We are looking forward to what God has in store for us in this new year. We pray God's continued blessings and covering for you and your family. Greetings, St. John family, and welcome to today's virtual worship experience. Please be reminded that members of the finance team will be here today from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. to receive your tithes and offerings. You may also take advantage of use of our cash app. Please be reminded that God loves a cheerful giver. And now let us be blessed with a word from our pastor, Reverend Washington. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made and we are rejoicing as we enter into a brand new month. This is the month of April, God's favorite month of the year. Let me welcome you to April and let me say happy April and happy resurrection season to you. It is a joy to greet you on this, the Lord's Day, April the 2nd. And I'm excited that we are together on the first Sunday in a brand new month. God has been good, God is being good, and God prepares to be better in the days to come. I am thankful that you've joined us. Let me greet everyone with a major good morning again. I'm excited. It's April and we are headed toward the resurrection. We are on the road to resurrection. If you have not, I ask that you would view our Bible study from this past week. It encourages us and it explains clearly what this Sunday is all about. We welcome you to Palm Sunday worship virtually. And because it is Palm Sunday, we will attune our attention to learn so that we might become everything that this word God has for us today says we are to become. Let me invite you to prayer and let me invite you to join me in the word. Let us pray. On this wonderful new month, we say thank you that you have allowed us to hear, to see, and now to begin experiencing a brand new month. Gracious God, it is in the name of Jesus, the one who went before us, setting a major example unto us. We come in his name because he said, according to your will, if we ask for anything, it would be given to us. So this morning, we ask that you would come and dwell among us. We are virtual, yet, O oh God, we know you are everywhere people who call upon your name are. So no matter where we are, we call upon your name now, inviting you to turn wherever we are into a place where your word would be fertilely blessed. It will take root in our soul and develop us into the children of you you desire us to be. Speak to us, use this your servant so that you might receive the glory. Through Christ who is Lord, we pray, amen. Thank you so much. And I once again want to invite you family to join me on this Palm Sunday. It is Palm Sunday. It's Palm Sunday, a day when you and I are attuned to the purposes of Jesus. He is preparing to go to the cross and experience the road to his resurrection. But before any of that happens, he's got to go through today. Let's go together in the Gospel of John, shall we? John's Gospel. And when you are in John's gospel, if you would turn your attention to chapter 12 and in chapter 12 of John's gospel, I want to share with you a few verses to center us for this Palm Sunday message. Shall we go? John chapter 12, verse number 12 is where we shall find our footing. I'm reading from the English translation on this important, powerful day. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast, heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches that happened to be made of palm trees and they went out to meet Jesus and they started crying, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and he sat on it. And just as it is written, 
in the scripture. Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's ass. And he and his disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had to happen as it was written about him. And he had done those things. The crowd that had been with him when he was called, when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised Lazarus from the dead, continued to bear witness. The reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they had heard that he had done this as a sign, raising Lazarus from the dead. So the Pharisees said one to another, you see that? He is gaining everything. Look, the world has gone after him. Amen. This morning, I want to invite you to the simple subject that will bless your life, walking in victory, walking in victory. Today, we celebrate Palm Sunday, a day that has been celebrated in the life of people who have followed God through the action and religion of Christianity for 1600 years. My brothers and sisters, we join the people of the ancient world in affirming that Jesus is entering into the city of Jerusalem on his way to Resurrection Sunday. We celebrate like they did in the day of Jesus, reminding one another by waving a palm that God is good and Jesus is a conquering king. My brothers and sisters, what in the world are we calling it Palm Sunday for when three out of four gospels have decided that he would ride in on a donkey while people laid their coats and their cloaks on the ground so that he would walk, ride into town on top of something. But the Gospel of John decides to enter into the picture, celebrating that there were palm branches that were waved in the face and the presence of all around in the city as Jesus entered into the city on a donkey. Beloved, I just want to share a few things with you about this powerful and this victorious text that will bless your life regardless of where you are. If you need to know that you can walk in victory, no matter what circumstance you face, this is your day. You need to understand it's important that clearing your throat was the start. But now, as we move toward resurrection, we need to understand the power of Palm Sunday. You see, the people at the time that Jesus lived would have understood a couple of things that are uncovered in the text that we will brush by. Beloved brothers and sisters, we have a love in this world we live in for symbolism, even though we may sometimes forget the meaning of the symbol. When you and I win, we are often given a trophy. If we have participated, beloved, in events for a calendar year, or if we've done a great feat in a cultural dynamic we're part of, they give us a trophy. Do you recognize that a thousand years from now, People may uncover, archaeologists may uncover the ground that you and I have lived in and see that there are trophies, golfing trophies, karate kung fu trophy, baseball trophy, football trophy, boxing trophy, box car racing trophy, stock car racing trophies. You get the picture. There will be beauty trophies. There will be also strong man trophies. And as archaeologists may uncover them thousands of years from now, they may say that the people who lived in the 21st century and in the 20th century had a fascination with trophies. And that could be further from the truth as we make the assumption of the people who were waving branches. We hear that Palm Sunday comes in. And as a pastor, I want to correct a couple of things. We hear that Palm Sunday is rolling around and everybody assumes that Palm Sunday is a Sunday where you're going to praise God until the roof falls in. <coughs> but I want to be very clear, excuse me, that Palm Sunday is more than just praising God for Jesus who rides. 
You got to understand why you praise God and wave your palm. That's what I want a Christian faith to understand right now. If you're looking and listening, I desire that you do praise God, but I want you to praise God for the right reason, not because it's popular, not because you saw the cultural dynamic praise. You wave your palm, not because your neighbor has, but this year you're gonna understand that I'm waving my palm for the right reason. The people who watched Jesus ride into the city were astonished, but they didn't get why they were celebrating. A king who had won a victory in a war would always ride into the city that he was coming home to on a horse. That horse symbolized that the victory was his, that he had conquered his enemies, that he had overcome the obstacles and the challenges and the death angel had left him alone. Jesus didn't ride on a horse. He rides on a donkey. A donkey symbolizes a king is coming in the name of peace. That's why the text says, blessed be the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Because Jesus riding on a donkey symbolizes that he is coming in the name of peace. He is actually, get this, I should have called the message this, flipping the script. Jesus, a king, has declared that he is going to have victory over the enemy of sin and death, not by riding a horse. But Jesus declares victory is going to come by peace. And I've come to celebrate and wave my palm. Not because he's coming to bring victory on a horse like a regular king would, but he's coming on a donkey. He's bringing victory through peace. And right now I got to pause and say that what we need in this country and this world at this very moment is a king who will ride in and give us peace. We got enough confusion, enough people dying. We have enough people getting killed and enough bloodshed. We have enough people suffering on the wages of sin. And we have enough people who have lost their compassion and care for people who are going through. We have enough of that. We don't need any war. We need a king who proclaims peace. We need somebody to come and flip the script in your life. And where people are looking at you and expecting you to fight like they fight, you come and you bring peace and peace leads to victory. I'm sorry if you thought that you could win your fight, but the word of God says that we war not against flesh and blood, but we battle against principalities and powers in places that are above us. There is a war going on that's around us, but it's not the war you think that's happening in the flesh. It is a spiritual war where people are fighting for the life of eternity and the enemies, the imps, and the challenges are working to break your spirit. But I've come to tell you this day that Jesus riding in on Palm Sunday is about him riding into our life in the 21st century, in this year, and this month of April, saying rather than beat your enemy by knocking them down in the flesh, Rather than beat your enemy by beating them back with a stick or a gun, rather than knocking your enemy to the ground with fist, the Lord says, I'm coming to beat your enemy in peace. I'm going to love the hell out of the folk, and I'm going to issue peace when they think they want to fight. And I'm telling you now that symbolic of God through Christ Jesus flipping your script. You think it's going to happen one way, but I've come to tell you Jesus is saying it's going to happen a completely a different way. And that's shouting news. I'm telling the Lord, come on in to my circumstance. Ride in here, Jesus, on the donkey. And where I think I need to fight, the Lord says, let me bring peace. Where you think you need to disturb the atmosphere with your feeling of being left out with your feeling of being muted, with your feeling of being pushed aside, even though you know your worth and value. Jesus says, don't fight like that. Let me ride in on a donkey. Let me bring to your attention, God can defeat anything with peace. And I've come to tell you as a pastor, I've known that some battles that churches are going through can be won by the war of peace. If you just let the Lord fight the battle, he will bring peace to the raging seas of your life. Jesus enters on a donkey, symbolizing that I'm not coming 
the way you think I'm coming. I'm coming to defeat every enemy. I'm, watch this. He was supposed to come according to culture and the disciples. They were excited about him coming because they assumed he was going to knock over the Roman government and give back to the people of the Jewish, the Jewish people and the community of Jews. They wanted him to beat and defeat the Romans and give them back the cultural current kingdom that they lived in. And Jesus coming on a donkey is the reverse. He's flipped the script. He says, I am the king. I will beat this system, but I'm not going to do it the way you think I'm going to do it. Why you think I'm going to knock them over in the head with the blood, with bloodshed. I'm going to knock them over in the head with my blood and I'm going to give you peace. I've come to tell somebody when you go back to work this week, stop trying to fight the fight that you're fighting at work with the utensils you've been fighting. You need to let the Lord ride into work on a donkey and issue peace. Let the Lord ride into your doctor appointments with peace. Let him know that it is well, no matter what the appointment and the, 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 the test suggest, it's well. Because God is going to let Jesus ride in and give you peace. That's the exciting part. But I want to press and cut across the field because the children who are yelling Hosanna misunderstand the palm and the word Hosanna. I got to get out of here, but I got to give you this. Check this out. The palm is just like our trophy. An athlete at the time of Jesus would not be given a trophy. An athlete would have been given a palm to symbolize, watch this, victory that had just been accomplished. You missed your shout moment. We wave palms, not just to praise God for what the Lord has done. We wave palms as a symbol of victory and that we have the victory. You missed it. You can go to work with a palm in your hand. And every time people start talking crazy, start saying what they're going to do to hurt you, start talking about how they are going to sit you down and keep you, you can wave your palm. And they say, what you doing? Oh, nothing. I'm just getting a laugh. What you're doing is symbolizing the victory that Jesus gave to us and shows us I'm flipping the script. You missed it. Every now and then you need to take out your palm throughout the rest of this year. And when you see circumstances that are greater than you, wave your palm. Don't just wave it tomorrow at work, but wave it today at church. Don't just wave it because the choir sings. Don't just wave it because the preacher says celebrate. Wave it because you think in that moment about everything you are up against, about every naysayer, about every bill, about every sickness, about every parenting challenge, about every frustrating moment and people you're dealing with, even in yourself. Every now and then, I've decided I better wave my palm tree at myself because I need to remind me that God has given me the victory, not by riding on a horse, but by the victory of the palm. The victory starts by waving the palm because it symbolizes the trophy that God has gifted Jesus Christ in the resurrection. You missed it. The trophy that's sitting on yourself that says you're the champion because you committed and completed a task, get that palm and notify that you're praising God with the palm in advance for the victory that Christ Jesus has given you over what you are dealing with now. I wanna, I wanna rush on. I got a little excited, but this is good. They are waving palms because they understand that they are celebrating Jesus having victory. You, you missed your shout moment. Not because of the palm, but because of what the palm represents. They give Jesus a parade before the fight. Woo! <clears throat> That's good. They give Jesus a parade before he battles the enemy on the cross. They have faith in the prophetic words of Jesus. They have faith in believing that he is going to defeat everything that's coming in the week. They believe that Jesus is going to knock it out. They've got faith 
And so they celebrate before the fight. You got to learn that you got to celebrate by waving the victory of the palm before the circumstance comes. I've, I've decided I'm not going to wait until I get into the trouble. I'm not going to wait until the, the, the battle starts. I'm going to praise before, not that I'm going through, but that the victory is already mine. Somebody looking and listening needs to praise not for the chemotherapy, but you got to praise because even without the chemotherapy, the victory over the cancer that you're dealing with has already been given to you. Victory. The palm represents the victory and they celebrate Jesus before the fight. You ever been celebrated even before you performed what you were supposed to perform? That, that, that's a people that just believe. That no matter what you're up against, you're going to win. And they believe that Jesus is going to win no matter what he is coming against this week. They bellow these words, Hosanna. Now, most of us believe that Hosanna is a form of praise. We believe that Hosanna means to rejoice. We think it means fantastic. Yay! Do you realize that the origin and the real meaning of the word Hosanna is why the people in Jerusalem are shouting it before the fight. Hosanna means, Lord, save us right now. They were saying to Jesus as he rides in on peace, representing peace against hateration, Jesus says, I bring priests. And the people are saying to Jesus, Hosanna, which means, Lord, save us right now. You missed it. They understood his riding meant he was coming. And they celebrate by saying, Hosanna, which means save us in this very moment. Come here for a minute. Instead of talking about rejoice, you ought to say, Hosanna. I'm in the thick of a situation. Hosanna, I'm going through hell and high water. Hosanna, I need you to come in my circumstance now. Some of us say, Lord, have mercy, and that's good. But every now and then, you ought to shout Hosanna. As a matter of fact, on this day, if no other day, wave your palm as a symbol of victory that you won and shout Hosanna, which the Lord heaven knows, save me. You know what? Every now and then, you got to flip the script on the enemy. And you got to say to the enemy, I'm not going to say, Lord, help me. I'm not going to say, thank you, in a way that you know. I'm going to shout, Hosanna, which is a spiritual word, which symbolizes to the spirit realm that I need God to step in my circumstance and defeat my adversary in the spirit and in the flesh. You missed it. Every now and then, instead of saying, have mercy, say, Hosanna. Because you're calling upon the Lord in the spirit realm to do what he's already done in the physical realm. He's already won the battle against, against the enemy on the cross. You are calling for the Lord Jesus to come in a spiritual realm to defeat what you're fighting against so the victory will show up in the spirit and it'll manifest in the present and the flesh. I got to get out of here. But I hope you have been blessed. I hope that you understand what really this Palm Sunday is all about. It's about symbolizing that the Lord is flipping our script. He is not coming on a horse to symbolize he's going to knock the enemies over in the way we know. He's not doing that. He's coming on a donkey, which means he's going to bring victory through peace. I don't know how God is going to defeat your enemies but I know what God is going to use is peace. God's going to shut your enemies up. He's going to make your enemies leave you alone. He's going to prepare a table for you and me in the presence of the enemies. Not with the sword, but with peace. Thank you, heavenly God. And that's how he enters. Letting people know I am coming with peace to defeat your enemy. 
I'm coming to defeat, to, to defeat cancer with peace. I'm coming to defeat your economic inability and trouble with peace. I'm coming to bust up the argument and the spirit of cantankerous and self-centeredness in every relationship you have with peace. I'm coming to defeat the flesh with peace. And so when they discover he's coming in the name of peace, they then start waving a palm branch, symbolizing that they believe he's going to have the victory even before he has fought on the cross. Wave your palm tree this week and your palm branch rather this week as a symbol that you believe the victory is yours by Jesus Christ even before you go to work. Sometimes you, you may have to wave it in front of your children's room. Just wave the palm branch in front of their room. What you doing, ma? What you doing, dad? Nothing. I'm just giving victory. Sometimes you might have to wave it in front of your spouse or your children or your siblings, maybe even your parents. Sometimes the pastor has to wave it in front of the church because of all that he or she is going through. The waving of the palm symbolizes family. Victory is yours before the battle. Then they cried Hosanna, which symbolizes not yea, but it symbolizes Lord save me. It's a spiritual term used to ask God in the spirit realm to manifest victory in the flesh. Listen, I hope that you can walk in victory by one, knowing that it's coming not by bloodshed, but by peace. Walk in victory knowing that. Walk in victory waving your palm branch, symbolizing you believe the victory is yours even before the battle is fought. And speak Hosanna. You walk in victory speaking Hosanna, knowing that you mean God come save me right now. I pray that your week is a blessing. As we walk into the Holy Week, I need you to wave your palm branches because it symbolizes, hallelujah, that victory is ours. It's Holy Week. Take the time to reflect and get ready for Resurrection Sunday. Listen, we'll be right here in the sanctuary on Resurrection Sunday. I want you to come out, celebrate with us at 1115, and let's do it in an hour. God bless you. Have a good day, and I bid you peace, love, and soul.